Welcome to Indie Insights. My name is High Sight, and this is Moira. This is a game that really harkens back to the Game Boy genre, Game Boy era, I should say, rather even, including some Game Boy color options such as palette swapping. Yeah, that's right, you all remember the days when you could change the palette on your Game Boy color device and then it would take Game Boy games and try to put color on it as best as it could? Look at all these options. You can swap to any of these palettes. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Including Virtual Guys, aka Virtual Boy. But I'm going to stick with the old, uh, nostalgic gray, because who wouldn't? Let's dive right into this beauty of a, of a game. This game definitely tried to take as much inspiration as it could out of the old era of Game Boy and everything. That music is spot on. It sounds just like it was out of Game Boy Synthesizer, and it very well might have been. Some games do do that. This castle is well known for its great wizards, magic schools that exist something or other. Zapelli, Animos, greatest wizard, is also a teacher at Orneos Mage School. Zapelli has gone missing, okay. To make things worse, there have been reports of strange happenings all around the world. The monsters have been lurking about and roaming free across the eight kingdoms. Rubik, a young mage, a uh, magic student, grows tired of waiting for news of his master. With the wand that Zapelli gave him in hand, he goes on an adventure to find his teacher. This journey to find out what happened to his master will teach him more than he can imagine. That is beautiful cinematic work right there, especially when you consider that can be any palette that you happen to choose ahead of time. That's really cool. Now, it doesn't look like he's gone on an adventure, it looks like he's sleeping. Oi! Rubik, are you up yet? Am I even saying that right? Yeah, Rubik. Are you up yet? You are late to school, young man. Mimic. All right, look at that. All the movement and everything. Very nice. So let's talk a little bit about aesthetic right here, because you knew that conversation was going to come up with this game. Look at the absolute beauty of this game. This is a Game Boy game right here. You can look at it and you could say you wouldn't be shocked to find this on Game Boy. Now, granted, it does the thing where, you know, it's not widescreen, but that's totally cool. I mean, you're sticking with the aesthetic to the point where it's just always there. I'm OK with that. I like the way that pretty much anything that you think is a platform is a platform here, defined by the dark lines. You can tell very quickly by the dark lines that this bed is a platform. Maybe even this top? No, not the top. But this is also a platform. Whereas you can see by the boards on top of that, they're kind of less gray. The frame of this door is less gray, so you can tell it's not something you can stand on top of. Very well designed. Is that Mama? I'm as big as Mama. Holy crap. Have you seen the time? You should be at school already. Hurry to class, young man. And don't forget your wand, as you always do. I literally have it in my hand. Thanks. <laughs> Wait, she think I'm gonna put it down and just forget it? It's my freaking magic wand. All right. First, Mr. Mr. Zapelli, now Nico, is also missing. I need to study for my magic exams, but I'm so worried I can't think about anything else. Yes, the dither effects are outstanding. Everything is really on point with this whole thing. I'm loving it. I'm re look at that background. Look at the parallax in that background. Outstanding. Well, I guess it's not really so much parallax as it is. There's like a, a background that moves with you and a background that doesn't. But that's close enough. Outstanding. Very nice. So we got a nice little uh, nice little look right here. Now, I wonder if mid-game... Can I change the palette swap mid-game? Because that'd be really cool. That's more like a, an advanced thing. I guess not, but that'd be pretty cool. All right, let's walk along. Now, what about... Let's try some buttons here. Ah, yes! Reckless disregard for anyone's safety. Yeah, chicken! Chicken get shot with ice or something. I don't know. It doesn't really affect him. What about her? Nah, not really. They don't care. It just tickles him. It's like a little tickle ray. People are saying the great... Sorry. People are saying the great Zapelli was kidnapped, but I don't believe them. Well, I do. I mean, come on. He was a wizard. What, you think he just decided he just didn't want to be seen anymore? I mean, wizards don't tend to do that. They're going to be flashy assholes. Nico skipping class. That's smarty pants. Always researching stuff no one ever heard of. I mean, if you're, if you're that smart, I guess you don't need to go to class. You see that boy over there? Or, sorry. You see that boy over there? He doesn't really have a clue. I, I really want him to notice me. All he talks about is plastic models. Look, I'm on a, like, magical wizard quest. I just don't... Ah, fine. I'll let this guy get some. See that girl over there? Sorry. See that girl over there? 
I think I really, really like her. Oh, she's looking this way. Let's pretend we're talking about plastic models. Quick! <laughs> Young foolish love. Oh, they will never get together. Moving along. Hey, Rubric, how's it going? Try not to get into any trouble. So, so far, I'm very impressed by this game. Just by the, uh, the, the movement is actually really smooth. I'm very impressed by the way the camera follows you. It follows you quite well so far. The jumping works about as you expect. It's a little floaty, but I mean, I kind of expect that. It's kind of a Game Boy thing, really, to have kind of floaty jumping. Uh, take Mario Land, for example, the original one. How floaty was that jump? It was, like, really slow and everything. So, in a sense, it's following its aesthetic all the way down to the gameplay details, which is really cool. Carpe diem, carpe ominous. Seize the day and seize the ominous activities. I don't know. Oh, look. Empty house. Can I just steal from this treasure chest? This, no one's really... Come on. Okay, fine. No one's looking. Zapelli and I used to meet at the ver at this very cliff every now and again to talk. Now it's just me drawing sketches. And jump off the cliff! Hey, I lived. Goody. So, there might not be bottomless pits in this game, at least not in town. That's a plus. That's a plus. I had to know. Good morning, Rubric. Have you seen Nico around? Our class is starting soon. I thought my curly hair was so original, I thaw. Until I, it quickly became really popular in this town. <laughs> Call back to the fact that they're all the same sprites. Outstanding. Although then again, she has slightly different hair, doesn't she? Like the color. Everything else is the exact same, though. <laughs> Reusing of assets. Fourth wall breaking. Deadpool helped with this game. Ah, man, detention sucks. I've been here for two hours cleaning the entire classroom. I can't wait to get home and play some magic games. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> ah. Oh, wow. What is wrong with your nose, man? What is... Wow. Okay. Hi, Rubric. I was looking for you. Your friend Nico is missing. I need you to find him. You have the power to mimic people, people's and enemies' abilities. I need you to use that your power. Press X to use your wand and mimic my magic. Yeah. Beam. Ah, oh, yeah. Now I can really beat the crap out of some NPCs. You, come on. No, okay. So I guess that whole time I was trying to take like the chicken's essence, and the essence of the chicken didn't really have much magic behind him. So now I got the beam power. All right. Well done. You now have my favorite magic beam. Now pay attention. You can release the power. Uh, by pressing B. And then you can use the beam again by selecting the menu. Rubric, use your powers to find Nico and bring him back. Talk to the town guards. They will need they will help you. Alright, new quest. I like that little quick pop-up. It's like nothing big, nothing fancy, just new quest. There goes my power. And there it is again. Now that's kinda interesting. Why uh, why bother having it? So I'm sure it'll come into play later. I'm just curious at this point as a player. Why bother giving me the ability to release it if I could just go into the menu to release it? Oh, well, maybe I can't. I just assumed I could. So you can switch between them and there. Alright, can I release it and then switch right back? So you release it, and then you press R1 and you're right back at it. Interesting. I wonder what that's all about. Alright, you you got any powers for me? Sword! Oh hell yeah! Now we're talking the magic of sword, ladies and gentlemen. Can I go this way? Yeah, I can. All right, freeform RPG. Should I go to the castle? Castle of confusion? No, I want to check out this broken bridge. Ah, uh, there's not a, there's not like a broken bridge area. You have to just kind of wait until you fix it. All right, let's go to the castle of confusion. I love the like old school overworld map that happened right there. That's pretty slick. Whoa, okay, you're not a good guy. All right, that was my mistake. I apologize. I gave you the benefit of the doubt that you weren't a total asshole, but that was a mistake. So we got these two powers, and now we have a magic sword. Oh, look at that. So this is one of the big draws of the game. This is one of the big draws, is that you can combine powers together to get a completely unique power. In addition, if you combine them in a different order, such as this time beam into sword, now I have a beamerang which is also an amazing name for a weapon. I might just add that. So let's release this power. Let's see if he has anything. Nope, just normal sword. All right, so let's go with the with the beamerang here. Now, is it going to come back to me? Aw, oh, it doesn't actually come back to me. It's it's a beamerang. Oh, give me that, though. That's totally not what I expected. 
Now, what I do like is I'm getting into this action pretty quickly. It didn't take a lot of effort to get into the action here. I just went to the castle and boom, you're in. But I will say, the guy that was at the front gate, granted he didn't hurt me much by touching him for the first time, but he was actually an enemy and I had no idea, mainly because I had seen people just like him back at the guard tower. The beamerang should totally come back to you, just throwing that out there right there. So let's just switch to the magic sword. Yeah, I love that overworld map. It's so beautiful. Whoa, all right. Lights that turn on when you pass them. I can dig it. Oh, oh, sure. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is a hallmark of game design. This is something outstanding. First of all, I want to throw... I, I just need to stop here and talk about this. The illusion of danger. I totally thought this was a bottomless, bottomless pit. I'm sure you all thought it was a bottomless pit. Now, I obviously knew that these blocks had some kind of meaning. You know, they're obviously exclamation points. That means something. something's bad about them. I, I kind of had an intuitive leap. Maybe they'll disappear on me. But the fact that I didn't know for sure meant I just kind of go on to it and see what happens. Now, once I got to the edge of here, I saw an enemy, so I did the only thing that made sense. I attacked him from the bridge. And then, what happened? It disappeared, I fell down, and I didn't die. That's the important part right there. I did not die. It was the illusion of danger, but it was actually totally safe to teach me this new mechanic. That is such excellent game design, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is a big take-home for any game developers out there. This is how you do game design right. Most people wouldn't even go as far as to make the illusion of danger right here. Most people wouldn't even think, hey, let's make it so they think there's a bottomless pit here, even though there isn't. No, 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 no. This is just perfect game design. There was a reason for me to stop on the bridge, there was a reason for me to fall down, and there was a totally safe recovery. Outstanding level design. That is top tier right there. Wonderful work. Wonderful work. Now let's proceed, shall we? Big jump. That's actually our first big jump, isn't it? Over a small little pit of spikes. And now we're gonna get a little more intricate with platforms in between. See, it's all about the, the minor iterations. Ah, one extra heart, nice. Wait, can I actually go in here? No, okay. That's pretty sweet. Little re uh, rewarding for exploration. This is an excellent ramp up for this game. It teaches you all the little basic mechanics and even rewards you for exploring in this case. I went off the beaten path here. I certainly didn't have to go down here, but because I did, I got rewarded. Very nice. Wonderful level design. Wonderful. Alright, so now we know, and now we're fairly certain that that's Death Pit, because, I mean... Well, maybe not a Death Pit. It's going to drop me into spikes, though. We've seen the spikes down there. So let's go ahead and be very careful about this now. No enemy the first time around. Lucky us. Ow! Give me that. So that's just outstanding game design. That's all I can say about that. Really, you got to iterate on your little mechanics like that. That's how you really teach the player in a slow but engaging way. You're not getting like a little tutorial message or anything letting you know, hey, did you know that these blocks will disappear if you stand on them? No! No! You learn by failing. And that's a good way to learn. Because nothing teaches you better than failure. That's just fact right there. Scientific. Is that the Spelunky dude? I swear that looks like the Spelunky dude. If it is, that's awesome. If it's not, it should be because that's awesome. <laughs> All right, what's over here? I feel like the left side's gonna have some extra goodies for me. Ah, okay, so a little tutorial message there, but I could have taken that intuitive leap right there. Down, eh? Get out of here. Really digging this magic power right here, the ability to switch powers like that. Hopefully we'll meet something new. Actually, I should have tried, hang on, how about you? Beam power? Yeah, beam power. All right, but it is cool. It's like, it's basically a straight up curving mechanic. Oh, and look, it actually remembers your combinations, too, so I don't have to keep redoing them. I can just kind of... Magic Sword. Good selections. I wonder if you can actually... Can you pick... Can you pick what you want to be your quick select? Let's see. So look at all these powers. Look at all these, including the combinations. How many we got so far? This is just an early demo. 21 powers in this very early demo. Awesome. Awesome. We have a bestery. Look at that. In the ca Look at how straightforward this bestery is. You get three pieces of information. You get where they preside, you get what kind of power you get out of them, and whether or not they're aggressive or chill or whatever. That's slick. Look at that. So I, now I even know. The evil eyes, they're gonna give me the same thing as the evil mages. Although I think the evil eye is actually the wrong thing. I, I think that's supposed to be the bat thing. Oh, actually, he just doesn't have a sprite in here. That's a bug. Whatever. We found a bug. Also, aggressive is spelled differently. <laughs> aggressive. It, this is a single G aggressive. He's not super aggressive. He's not two G's worth of aggressive. This guy's two G's worth of aggressive. As is this guy. They're super aggressive. B-E aggressive, folks. Uh, got, oh, we can swap pallets from here. All right, let's, let's change up the pallets. My first adventure. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. Different inventories, quest logs. So many things here. And look at that. Just like that, we're in a Game Boy Color take on a Game Boy game. Outstanding. 
Oh, big dude. All right. And he's got a shield, too. All right. Let's wait until he's vulnerable. Yeah, because he's, he's going to react to me. I need to, I need to make him vulnerable. Ow. Okay, can I jump over him? He's a little big to jump over, but... Let me take a hit, I guess. All right, I just need to time it. So once he winds up, I gotta hit him. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Wind up, hit him. Wind up, hit him. Nope. So if I walk towards him, there it is. Enemy identified. What was that behemoth? It'd be cool. It'd be cool. What does Select do right now? Quit. No, no, no. Okay. It'd be cool if there was a button. Once an enemy gets identified, or even if I press start immediately when an enemy is identified, if it went straight to the best read for them. That'd be really cool. Alright, so that's the Dark Knight. He had a sword and he was double G aggressive. Oh wait, there was more information. Hang on. I'm, I'm an information nut here. I need to see all the things. Uh, press A for more information. Which one's A? There it is. There is no information about this monster yet. Okay, so that's probably for like future releases. Oh, hey, okay, you're alive. I didn't totally just try to kill you. Thanks a lot, Rubric. I owe you one. Rubik. Is it Rubik or Rubric? I guess it's Rubik. I owe you one. I thought I would be locked in there forever. Me? I came here to look in the books for a clue about where the Great Zapelli might be. But then the armors came to life, and I ended up locked in here. But hey, I found an old book written by the Great Zapelli himself. It's about spell combination. Oh, I already know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ancient times, yada, yada, yada. Only amazing people can do it. I guess I'm awesome. There we go. That would also apply to the quests. Like, if a new quest pops up and I press start immediately while it says new quest, I would love to go right to the quest log right on that quest. That'd be a great feature. Ooh, magic door. This was made in Construct 2. Well, that's really cool, actually. Construct 2 has been getting around lately with the 2D games. Very cool. Oh, look at that. It's like a little, little pig kitty thing. Wait a minute. Oof. And now I can be a mouse. All right, let's see what little mouse me looks like. Ah, wait a minute, what can you combine with mouse? Ah, uh, nothing? Okay, I guess you don't get a hold on to mouse. That's too bad. I'd love to, I'd love to combine mouse sword and literally just have a sword made out of a mouse. That'd be crazy. Let's keep going. Beam Mouse. Beam Mouse would be amazing. I'm trying to think of all the stupid, hilarious combinations we could get done here. So I'm guessing these are the checkpoints, right? They seem like checkpoints. Yeah! Taste the boomerang of vengeance! Oh, I guess this would have been perfect against the knight, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> I guess I probably should have used that. I just, I just love my beam sword so much. I do love that I had the option right there, though, you know? I could have done it my way. I did it the wrong way, but I did it a way that worked in the long run. Hey, look at that. We got little, uh, little evil robots. I enemy identified. What do you got? I probably should have seen what his power was. Alright, let's see. Robotron! Oh, he has a mystery power. I'm definitely gonna have to take this guy. Next time we see one, we're taking his power. So far, I'm just very wowed by this game. This game has done an outstanding job of immediately grabbing my attention. Oh, look at that. What do we got? Extra mana? All right. Come here, Mousy. Actually, I don't need. I don't need you. I don't need you, Mousy. Down we go. Whee! No fall damage. So it looks like the boomerang weapon does return, but only if it hits a wall. I think it's just return in general. I mean, you know, it's a boomerang. What's up here? Now let's see. I don't have mouse anymore, right? Yeah, no more mouse. I have to grab him again if I want him. All right. Let's see. Do you do you have anything aside from beam? Nah, you just beam. No flight. But yeah, I, I really can't sing the praises of this game enough. I'm very impressed by it. I should also mention, for those who don't already know, this currently is on Kickstarter. And has 29 days and tons of money already, but... You could always use more. Wait, no, I want your power. What's your power? You got no power? Ah, it's like you have no essence or anything. Like you were built some kind of a ton of ton... Tom a ton of ton... Tum... The tum... Oh, you can destroy this. I just wondering what those were. Nope, get out of here. Ow! Ah, no knocking me down the pit. <laughs> I feel like that's a secret mystery pit. Oh, you can hold down. Okay, so you can look down a little bit. Secret mystery pit. Yay or nay? I say yay. Yay! Oh, it leads to Mousy. Alright, Mousy. Ooh, extra life. Mystery pit. Yay! 
So he's neutral. I'm just saying I ain't gonna mess with him. I mean, they say he's neutral. He's just kind of running away. So the control scheme is actually really good. It's pretty straightforward, pretty enjoyable. Like, is he gonna hurt me if he touches me? Oh, yeah. Nah, you gotta die now. Sorry, man. I need whatever health you might have on you. Ah, nothing. Oh, 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 nope. That ain't dying. That ain't dying anytime soon. Now, I know sometimes the camera will snap into certain positions, like there. There's a good example right right there. That's really cool. It really is. But it's also a little jarring. Look at that. Boom. Like, it's suddenly following you again. I get the reasoning. I do. You want to try to have certain things highlighted in a certain way. But I think it's just a little too quick to snap right back into position. It'd be nice if there was more of a transitional period where instead of just like, hey, now it's on you again, it, it would kind of help, you know, ease the transition a smidge, make it look a little better. Conveyor belts. Now we're talking. Now we're talking basic platforming game mechanics. Aww, yeah. So it's interesting how the one thing that I'm kind of interested in is, in this game is it has lives, right? It's a platformer that has lives, but it's also kind of an RPG, isn't it? To some degree. It's like a Metroidvania, I guess you could say. But I don't really know any Metroidvanias with lives. None that come to mind immediately, at least. I mean, Metroid itself, no lives. Obviously, you'll die and you'll have to start back at a save point. A checkpoint, if you will. But I, I don't know how well lives and Metroidvanias really mesh, you know? It's kind of a tricky subject. Like, how do you... How do you make a Metroidvania with a game over? Is it just that you don't respawn back at the checkpoint? Maybe you respawn at the beginning of the last area? Not quite sure how that works out. I mean, lives are pretty archaic, but I guess they're also a nice reward mechanism. Wait a minute, you have bombs? I want bombs. Give me bombs. No bombs. Oh, come on. That was like a gimme. I totally wanted bombs. Oh, crap. Look at him. He destroyed that, uh, that spinny doohickey thingy. Oh god. Oh god. What would you call it? A, a gear? A cog? It's busted now, whatever it is. Oh god. So much movement! Oh, saved by the broken cog. Look at that, I can get a double hit if I get it off the wall there. Oh, I might also die if I'm not careful, so... Ah! Nope, magic sword. Magic sword, where are you? Oh, off-screen bomb. Mmm. Didn't see it coming. Kind of wish there was an indicator. All right, boss, round two. Let's get my trusty beam magic sword ready. Big man, big man. So there's a lot of dodge patterns and everything like that. My gusta. All right, so he can be flinched, but only just. So we obviously want to use this thing for cover as much as we can, because he'll both jump on it and the bombs will land on it, which is like win-win. But at a certain distance, I don't think that's going to work as well. So the developer obviously put in a quote-unquote easy way to win this fight. I wonder how far off screen these things go. Like, I wonder if that's hitting. Oh god. He doesn't really jump that high when he's on there. So if I just stay under cover right here, it's like having a, a bomb umbrella. Uh, anything I can use to shoot up? Oh yeah, this shoots up! Oh, that's- oh god, he can break him! Oh no! Oh, I have horribly misjudged my scenario. <laughs> I have horribly misjudged my ability to win this fight easily. Beam! Beam! Bombs! I really wish I could get bombs. But it's okay. I'm doing pretty good. And there goes my doing good. Sword! 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 What is that? What is- oh, more bombs. Oh! No! 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 All the dodging. I have no idea how much health he has. Oh boy. Yeah! Oh, that feels so accomplishing. Oh my goodness. That is, I wouldn't call it NES hard, but that is definitely like old school hard. That's the kind of hard you don't see that often. There's some great mechanics there. There's some new power. T-bomb. Oh, you have to kill him to get some. Some things you have to kill to get their bombs. But, uh, their powers, rather. But that is a great example of wonderful, like, boss fight right there. There was, like, three different stages. There was the stage where he, like, uh, just throws out his bombs. There was the stage where he jumps around. And there was the stage where he pulls on this lever and brings down raining fire destruction bombs. There were tons of vulnerable states on the enemies. There was a distinct advantage that was given to you temporarily, but only for so long, that you can utilize. That is an outstandingly well-designed boss fight. I... I am flabbergasted by how well this whole thing has been designed. This is amazing. Alright, so let's try combining some of this now. It's like half the fun, right? Bomb sword! 
some kind of sword. Do I have to say, exploding sword? Is that what it is? Exploding sword with a little bit of knockback. All right, what else we got? How about uh, bomb sword? It's like a, oh, an exploding dagger. Ho ho, ho ho ho. Oh my, oh, okay. How about exploding, nope, nothing for beam, but beam into, okay, how about this? E-bubble, exploding bubble. Oh my goodness gracious, this, this game is so impressive. Just so undeniably, unbelievably impressive. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, new game mechanic. What are we here? Did you forget how to combine power? Obviously I didn't. I got here first. If anything, you want to put that sign down there, because I don't think I can jump this. Yeah. No, I think you want to put that sign down here, because by now I've obviously already done it. Oh, wow. Super talented uh, team right here. Run, run, run. No, no, no. Ah, instant death. Oh, I didn't expect instant death for that. Oh, no. Well, at least I don't have to fight him again, right? Right? Right. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, four lives, four lives. This is where the live system scares me. Like, what? what's the end game here if I lose all my lives? That's what I worry about. All right, do bombs hurt? Also, anyone else notice that the bomb just dropped a heart for me? <laughs> bombs don't hurt, but they drop items. Okay. Exploding sword is pretty legit, I must say. Outta here, you. Ow. No, out. Alright, let's see. Where's my dagger? Uh, that's the sword. That's the other sword. There's the dagger. Whee! Now, I would like you to be able to set up uh, which ones go to what. Also, we have these beautiful L2 and R2 buttons, which I don't see used yet. It'd be nice if we could set certain powers designated just to those. That'd be pretty sweet. Alright, let's try this again. This time, hopefully, no instant death. Oh, are you kidding? No, no, no! Okay, at least I was invulnerable. Ooh, that could have gone so much worse and made me so much sadder. <laughs> Alrighty, dagger. Ah. Ah, okay. There we go. Up we go. Nope. Nope. Oh god, he's gonna blow up. Thank goodness for invulnerability. It's what separates the protagonist from the antagonists. Ah, I guess those need to blow up, don't they? We can fix that. Boom! Nice. Come on, give me goodies. You did before. Alright. So, so far, I'm just super impressed by this game. It's already in a super polished state, and if this is the way that things are going to go for this game, I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty stoked for this game. Very impressive in general. Just awesome work with this game. Use T-Bomb to clear the path. Done. Oh, overworlds. Who doesn't love a good overworld? Well, folks, I think I'm going to end it there for right now. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been Moira. A game that's just a game after my own heart. This lovely Game Boy game, a Game Boy style game, I should say, rather, is currently on Kickstarter. And in my opinion, it deserves all the funding you could possibly get to make this game the greatest reality ever. If you are a fan of any old school platformers or any old school game in general, this game is going to speak to you. This is going to grab you by the nostalgia and never let go. Ladies and gentlemen, Moira. Go check it out.